Hello friends, and not yet friends, welcome back to Mary's Test Kitchen, where we're making vegan buffalo chicken from tofu in a much more incredible, shreddable way than maybe you've tried before. And it's all for you. Meaning that if you're self-isolating solo, this recipe is the perfect size. And if you want to share with one other person because you're <laughs> so generous, or it would make things awkward to not share with the person that you'll be continuing to self-iso with for the foreseeable future and you must keep the peace, then okay, I guess. If you must share, add a little side dish to round things out, maybe my vegan macaroni salad. You could check that out afterwards, but you're gonna wanna see how this one is done first. You may recognize this technique from such videos as the best vegan fried chicken, vegan general sows, vegan honey butter chicken, and my more recent Nashville hot tofu. Oh yes, that one is awesome and really easy to boot as well. So you can skip ahead to the timestamp on the screen, in the description, or in the pinned comment if you have already got this technique down. But if you haven't, let's continue. This medium firm tofu was frozen right after I bought it, plenty of time before the expiration date. Frozen solid, then thawed slowly in the fridge for a day, in the vegetable crisper, since that's one of the warmest sections in my fridge. Sometimes the process takes two days, if my crisper happens to be full and I have to use that top shelf. Then when I felt it was thawed all the way to the middle, I stuck it in the freezer again to make the solid frozen block. That second freeze helps to give the medium firm tofu a little more stability. Don't ask me why, but when I tested freezing only once, then thawing, and then trying to press it, the tofu fell apart way more easily in multiple tests. Now, there's no global standard for tofu, so all brands are a little different. Some, sadly, do not go flaky. I'll explain, but first, let's defrost. I usually do this in the fridge, but it takes at least a day, so if you're in a hurry, you can defrost in your microwave so long as it's the final thaw. Back to the tofu differences. Even when labeled medium firm, some go spongy when frozen instead of flaky. If yours ends up to be that kind, you only have to freeze and thaw the one time, not two. Lucky you. You won't get the same incredible shreddable texture, but who are you trying to fool anyways? What we're really doing is making the tofu easier to squeeze without breaking while keeping this tender meaty texture. The tiny pockets that form when the water freezes lets that tofu tasting water out easily so we can add our chosen flavor in. That said, extra firm or firm tofu, while it's not the best for this recipe and definitely will not give you those flaky layers, actually goes kind of grainy. If that's all you can get, and I know it's gonna be kind of hard to get things these days right now, well, sure. But think about it, they contain more bean, less water, so you're gonna need extra flavor. You go ahead and make those adjustments. This is your buffalo tofu, and there are no rules. Finally, after a million minutes, we have our fully defrosted block of medium firm tofu. The water around it is pretty warm, which means I went a little long. If we weren't using this right away, we'd want to press out the water ASAP and cool it down fast so it doesn't stay too long in the danger zone. But we are using this right away, and my plan is to have this entire block of tofu for myself. <laughs> Spoiler alert, yes, I did have that all to myself. As usual, I'm using this tofu making mold as a press. It fits my tofu perfect, so the sides are supported, which makes this delicate tofu less likely to break before I break it on purpose. You can use two flat surfaces, like a couple cutting boards, if you don't have something like this, just gently squeeze out as much water as possible. Then just as gently separate the block into pieces. There will be places in the tofu where it wants to break, so find those areas and peel away with just the lightest touch. This way we can reveal the layers that the water created when it froze in the block. Thank you. 
dab away as much moisture as you can. Remember, the drier the better before we replace the water with vegan chicken flavoring. This time, I'm using my DIY vegan chicken broth powder, which is basically nutritional yeast, salt, and herbs. It's really simple and tasty, though you could use whatever vegan chicken broth powder or paste to make double strength vegan chicken broth. In this case, I'm using one and a half teaspoons of powder into a half cup of water. Stick the dried pieces of tofu into the broth and gently press so the broth gets soaked up. Some people have asked why I don't soak the whole block before breaking it up into bite-sized pieces. Well, I want to make sure that each piece gets good saturation. But then again, I haven't tried it the other way, so maybe it's just as good. Maybe. Just leave those in there while we make our one-step breading mix. With about a half cup of all-purpose flour, you can choose regular or gluten-free. Both are fine. Plus a quarter cup-ish of nutritional yeast. I also have some whole wheat panko crumbs I want to use up and some store-bought fried onions. Those will give extra flavor and crunch. If you don't have them, just toss in some onion powder and something else crunchy like crushed up chips or a non-sugary cereal. Come to think of it, sugary cereal might actually be good, you know, spicy and sweet. Anyways, season however you like. But remember, the chickenish seasoning is already inside and we're going to add sauce later so you don't have to go all in. Then gently pick up a piece of soaked tofu and coat with your seasoned flour mix. You want to get each piece coated on all sides, but you don't need too much. So shake off any excess. If you have some crumbly bits, just place them together. They will stick together as they bake, and as you can see, I'm using parchment paper in the baking pan for easy cleanup later. When your tofu pieces are coated in the seasoned flour and on your pan, they are ready to go in the preheated oven. Except I forgot to preheat, and now we're going to have to wait. It's fine. You can make this recipe in a regular oven, convection oven, or an air fryer. With your regular or convection oven, preheat to 425 Fahrenheit or 220 Celsius, and when it's ready, bake your tofu for about 15 to 20 minutes. If you're using an air fryer, use the same temperature, or if yours doesn't go up that high, just go for the highest temperature it can, and check it at about 10 minutes. No matter what you're using, bake until the tofu is getting some golden color and the edges are looking a little browned. Since we didn't add oil yet, they will look kind of sad, but don't worry. Spray or brush on a light coat of oil. Make sure you get all sides and flip them. Then pop them back in for 10 to 15 minutes. Now would be a great time to whip together your vegan buffalo sauce. Just combine a quarter cup of hot sauce, a vinegar-based one like Frank's, or whatever you happen to have. It's fine. We're in a crisis situation. Uh, you want to add the same amount of melted vegan butter, a quarter teaspoon of onion powder, and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Mix it up really, really well. Taste it. See if you want to adjust. It's up to you. Once you have your sauce, you probably are close to needing to check on your nuggets. When they're golden brown and crispy, then you're ready to toss them in sauce. and then plate them up right away with some celery and vegan creamy dip. This one is just vegan mayo with chives and dehydrated onions, some poultry seasoning, and lemon juice. And there you have it. I know, it's hard to believe your eyes. Does someone in your life need to see this? Send this video over and you might just change their life with this vegan buffalo tofu. When it's flaky like this and it really looks like it, I call it vegan buffalo chicken because calling it tofu seems weirdly less descriptive. And let's be honest, most people who are not subbed to this channel but ended up watching this video got here by searching the term vegan buffalo chicken. That's a little behind the scenes search engine optimization tidbit for ya. Anyways, thank you so much for watching to the end, my friend. If you make this recipe, and I really hope you do, please post it on Instagram and tag me. I just love to see these recipes in your kitchens. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. That really helps me out. And subscribe if you haven't already for more easy vegan recipes. P.S. If you got deja vu from this video, it's not just you. This recipe first appeared in Vegan Meals for One back in February 2019. 
If you haven't heard already, I'm making dedicated tutorial versions of the best and most popular recipes that don't have their own videos because, well, they deserve their own dedicated videos. Plus, I'm improving them, adding more relevant details to make them more clear and hopefully making sure that everyone can make the recipes more easily and successfully. I really hope you like them. And again, thank you so much for spending your time with me. I really appreciate it. Um, everyone, I hope you're staying safe and staying inside if you can. And uh, I will see you next time. Bye for now.